Hey hi welcome back to our channel so today we are going to share the HCL interview experience so this is my second video on the same interview experience so already I have shared the interview uh, the round one interview questions uh, in the my previous video so in this video I will be sharing my round two interview questions which basically includes spring boot spring and angler so uh, this video can be helpful to those people who are looking out for spring interview questions or spring boot interview questions or angular interview questions so in this video like in the upcoming slides i'll be sharing like uh, this slides basically describes what all topics that were asked me in my interview like it the uh, questions that were asked me were like on java spring spring boot angular and in this uh, video i'll be sharing the feedback of the interview process also like what were the positive constraints and how much salary they have offered me so without uh, delaying much we uh, i would like to start the spring interview questions so the first question was like how is spring singleton being different from gang of four singleton pattern so for that i have answered the like the gang of four defined singleton has having one instance per class loader whereas spring singleton is defined as one instance of bean definition per container so the next question here was like difference between file system resource and class path resource in spring framework so the answer goes like this the class path resource looks at the class path from spring configuration file while file system resource looks in the file system in class path resource spring search for the spring configuration file at the class path so spring hyphen config.xml should be included in the class path if spring hyphen config.xml file is placed at src folder then the configuration file can be used directly because src folder is already in the class path by default so in the file system resource the path of the spring config dot xml or spring configuration file needs to be provided related to the project or the absolute location of the file so this was my answer so the next question was name some of the design patterns used in spring framework so in at that moment what all i remembered i have tried to explain him so so basically the, my answer would go like this so there are few dependent uh, like there are few design patterns that are used in spring framework like dependency injection factory pattern singleton template method front controller and proxy so these are the things that i remember there can be few others few other design patterns also so please go through it uh, so <coughs> if, I, if i would like if i want to go through the answer then dependency injection is nothing but center to the whole bin or application context concepts factory pattern uh, bin factory for creating instance of an object singleton bin defined in spring config files are singletons by default so template method used extens extensively to deal with the boilerplate re repeated code for example rest template jms template pa template front controller spring provides dispatch a servlet to ensure an incoming request gets dispatched to your <laughs> proxy used in aop and remoting uh, the next question was the continuation of the previous like oh, what is dependency injection in spring framework so i hope everybody who have worked on the spring would be knowing this answer so my answer was like this the dependency injection is an aspect of inversion of control and a general concept expressed in many different ways as this concept suggests you do not create your object but describe how it should be created you don't directly associate your ob con components and services together in the code but the describe the mapping and association between the services and components in a configuration file a container which is basically the ioc container then holds the responsibility of ho hooking it all up based in the definition on the definition so the next question here was like difference between the bean at the bean and at component annotations in spring so may, mostly many gets confused like because both the uh, the final result would be same uh, of the both the annotations but there are few differences which i have tried to explain in here so the uh, the first point is that the result of the both the annotations is the same the bean is added to the spring context however there are some issues or the differences which i have tried to explain here so let's say we got a model which is stayed in multiple apps and it contains a few services not all are needed for each app 
if we use at the right component on those services service classes and component scan in the application we might end up detecting more beans than necessary in this case you either had to adjust the filtering of the component scan or provide the configuration that even the unused beans can run otherwise the application context won't start in this case it is better to work with at the bean annotation and the only instantiate those beans which are required individually in each app so essentially use at the red bean for adding the third party classes to the context and component and at the red component if it's just inside your singleton application <coughs> so the next question here was like oh, difference between at controller and at rest controller annotation in spring mvc so my answer went like this so at the red controller denotes that the mark class in is a spring mvc controller but where, whereas come to at the red rest controller is is nothing but a combination of at controller and at the red response body annotation at the red at the red rest controller annotation marks class marks any class as controller and in addition to that it annotates the class with a response body annotation also so this was the difference which i remembered at that moment and i have explained the same and the next question here was like explain bean factory in spring so bean factory is like a factory class that contains collections of beans the bean factory holds bean definition of multiple beans within itself and then instantiates the bean when asked by client bean factory is an actual representation of spring ioc container that is responsible for containing and managing the configured beans so the next question was like like this is one of you can say like mostly asked the uh, questions in the interviews like um, this is based on the transaction management so the question was like what are the different types of transaction management in spring so my answer was like bam what my answer it, it, it's like basically spring supports two types of transaction management one, one is programmatic transaction management the other is declarative transaction management so as soon as i said him this answer so the next question was this like when do you use programmatic and when do you use declarative transaction management so programmatic transaction management can be used for application with less volume trans uh, transaction operations and declarative transaction management is preferred for applications involving large scale scale transactions so the next question here was like how do i inject value into static variables in spring bin so uh it, this was a bit tricky question i would say so the answer is this the spring does not allow injecting to public static non file and field so the workaround will, will be changing the private modifier so i have also given a sample code how do we inject a value into static variables here so please go through that and the next question here was like why spring boot is optionated so spring boot automatically configures a lot of dependency just by its availability in its class path for example it can auto configure tomcat if the server contains container is not available this is why spring boot is optionated because it's auto configured many dependencies and if if it is not needed and we can override auto configuration settings as needed so the next question here is like what is the role of at the rate spring boot application annotation so basically this is uh, if, uh, if you are going for spring interview question this is a, a must known answer uh, like basically the spring boot annotation can be used to enable those three features below uh, like basically it is a combination of three annotations uh, like at the rate enable auto configuration at the rate component scan at the rate and configuration so i also tried to explain the answer please go through the answer so the next question here is like how does the dev tools provided auto restart works in spring boot so he was uh, asking me this in detail to explain the answer so my, my answer was this like spring boot restarts uh, spring boot restart technology works by using two class loaders so classes that don't change like third party jars as an example are loaded into base class loader classes that actively change during deploy development are loaded into restart class loader so when the application restart the restarts class loader is restored and a new one is created 
this makes the application register faster than the code resource as base loader is already available so this was my answer so you can go through google or research on this more to find it more accurate answers so the next question here was like explain microservice architecture so <coughs> uh, at that moment whatever i got i have tried to explain it, it to the interviewer so i have also given a big uh, answer in this slide itself if you are uh, aware of the answer please you can continue uh, watching this video or you can halt a, halt the video for a second and you can go through the entire answer so the next question here was on explain the benefits of microservices so there are n number of uh, benefits that microservices are providing at the same time it is providing some few disadvantages also so i have tried to explain the advantages in this slide so i would request you to hold this video for a second or for a moment and go through that i hope everybody should be knowing the advantages of microservices but still if you are not aware you can go through that so the next question was explain the term statelessness with respect to restful web services so if you are aware of the abbreviation rest in that st itself defines the state transfer and stateless means complete isolations this means the state of the client's application is never stored on the server and it is passed on in this process the client sends all the information that is required for the servers to fulfill the http request that has been sent thus every client request and response is independent to each other with complete assurance of providing required information and if we, we say that every client passes a session identifier which also acts as an identifier for each session so this was my answer for what was the term statelessness with respect to rest so the next question here was like enlist some of the http methods with description so if you are aware or if you are already working on the rest i would uh, like i'm sure like you would be already knowing these methods that there are get put post delete options these are the http methods and he was explaining uh, expecting me to answer in which scenarios we would go with what like in which scenario we will go with which uh, method http method i will use so i have explained him that in detail and he was also asking me the response like uh, what was the res uh, response codes related uh, questions also like what does 200 refer to what is 500 refer to what is 403 what is 404 401 and few others so please brush up on that things also so with that we are done with the spring and spring boot interview questions so now i would be starting the angular interview questions that were asked me in this interview so firstly uh, the questions that were asked me was the first question that was asked to me was to write the entire application from scratch uh, maybe he was looking at me uh, like whether i am actually having the experience on working with angular or not so he was uh, yeah, so i was asked to write entire flow like write from the index.html to app or app component and how the service calls are made how the services are loaded into the modules what is ng module and what are the modules so how you have divided your application uh, so so that kind of questions were asked me firstly then there were uh, then the questions like uh, what is binding and different types of binding in angular was the question <coughs> so the, if you i have also tried to explain in the below so basically there are <coughs> different kinds of binding like two way binding event binding and property binding uh, i have also tried to i have already given the explanation in the slide so if you are not aware of it please you can go through it walk by halting a video for a second so the next question was like, what is the difference between components and directives in angular so i have tried to explain the differences between those two in this slide so components and directives like in what in which scenarios you use what so uh, a thread component is, is annotation that is describes a component the directive is uh, Compo annotation that describes a directives it is uh, like component is a directive <coughs> which is which uses shadow dom to create encapsulate visual behavior called components components are typically used to create ui widgets whereas directives 
is used to add behavior to the existing DOM elements so in this way I have uh, tried to explain few differences here you can go through it and the next question here was on the, what are the models in angular so a model in angular is defined as a file where all the directive components pipes and services are grouped and interlinked together to make it a perfect working angular application every angular app has a root model which will be defined inside app.module.ts which is the typescript file format to define a module in angular ng model can be used so the next question is was like uh, explain the routing in angular js uh, to be frank i was not aware of this because i haven't never worked in angular js uh, like i was i've started working in angular 2 and above versions so i was not aware of this question so i said to him like i don't know like how it used to work so i was uh, this answer i have uh, googled it and tried to explain it a bit here so if you are interested to go through it you can halt a video and you can go through the slide so the next here question was like what is aot or ahead of time compilation each angular apps gets compiled internally the angular compiler takes in the js for code compiles it and then produces some js code this happens only once per occasion per user it is known as aot compilation note there are few other questions on like what is the version of angular in the market what are its features how to upgrade it to the latest version i i didn't want to go into the details because of every six to ten months angular comes up with a new version with the new features so this question keep this answer keeps on changing so if you are an angular developer you 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 have to go through that new features and you should be knowing that what is the latest version in the market so with this we are, we are done we are done with the interview questions on spring spring boot and angular so the next section here i am try to give the feedback of the interview like basically the positives like hr team nicely manage the whole interview process no lo long waitings for the interviews like uh, if we go for the interviews there is a huge waiting usually but here it was not the case so the constant here is was uh, no constant for the second round but uh, there was only a delay in getting the call from hr for package discussion so the salary that was offered me was like 45 percent hike to my current package uh, which i think it was a good hike that was given to me so that's it from the video like thank you uh, and i would request you all to please do subscribe to catch all the updates of the other videos also so uh, because there are couple of videos that are coming up which are in queue which are in the editing mode so thank you for watching this video so what i feel is this video would be helpful to someone who is looking out for hcl interview process or the HTL, hcl interview questions that are asked or the java interview questions or someone who is looking out for spring interview questions or like someone who is looking out for spring boot interview questions for experienced or for freshers and so if someone is looking out for the hcl interview process like how the process like interview process is conducted at hcl so this video would be helpful to all those people so thank you uh, i would request you all to once again like please do subscribe comment and provide your feedback on the interview thank you